Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today, we're going to be learning how you can keep a server active for much longer than it typically would be. You see, most Valheim servers have a relatively short life cycle, lasting for anywhere from three to nine weeks. What's actually more normal than not is to stop playing. In order for you to keep your server active, there's a couple things that you have to have a solid understanding of. The first point, you need to know what normal boss progression is like in Valheim. Additionally, you'll need to understand the different types of players. And then finally, different players have different time availability. And there's a general rule of thumb that'll help you understand where conflict actually comes from. So first, let's recap on the basics of progression in Valheim. They'll need to kill a boss to get an item to be able to either build or explore. And that same process is repeated each biome and each boss. This is designed to get the player exploring and progressing through the biomes. But I'm going to propose that the very system that makes them progress is also the system that destroys their immersion. And if you don't understand this, you will fail to keep a server alive. Because the excitement that comes from boss progression is unsustainable. Just think about it, you eventually get to the end of this circle. And what then? And the phenomena that you will observe is that people kill this boss and they never show up again. If you don't understand this, you won't be able to successfully manage the players on your server. And the reality is most people don't even get to be in the Mistlands to be... Most players are gonna kill Eek. And they're also probably gonna kill the Elder. But the moment you get to the Swamp, a substantial amount of those early players, they actually don't end up going into the swamp and other biomes because they don't feel comfortable and they end up staying in the meadows with the black forest as the dangerous area and getting entrenched in the, the interactions between those two biomes. And so as a, a server developer, you need to understand that unless you give them another reason to be playing on the server, then most of their interaction is going to happen in these first two biomes, the meadows and the black forest. And a significant number of new players will join, progress through this part, and then taper off. This is where you need to know the sort of player life cycle. Because if you think that you can keep your one server alive with the same players, I am here to tell you that that is delusional. All players are temporary. They are all here for a time and then they go. The only way to keep a server alive is to have an influx of groups of new players to replace those that leave. But this is the hardest part. The sweet spot is anywhere from two to four players basically on the server all the time. And then there's like peak points where it's more than that. But for the server to feel really alive, you don't need that many active players. And that's sort of what I'm getting at. And to illustrate this point, here's one of the community places. Many players have made a bed here at some point. So you can see all the different people who cycled through. So three, six, 19, 18, 19, 20, 21. And this is just in one of the communal places. But you can see how in order for the server to be active, you must have a way to trickle in new people. And you need to do this in a way where the new people don't cause too many problems for the existing player base. And this is quite a challenge. So I'll be completely open with you and explain the gate that I use to sort of process people and get people onto the server. 
because technically it's a public server. If you really want to, you can figure out that going to an old video about the server and then finding a link and following that and then following some instructions will enable you to get what you need and join us and talk to us. So what I've done is just make it possible but inconvenient and unclear. The people who join are more likely to be actually interested in what the server's about, right? And this is something that's quite important. Because if you don't give them some alternative reason to be on the server, some other experience to have, past the typical experience, then what's gonna happen? Well, they're gonna progress through bosses. And every time the group moves on to a next boss, players will trickle off and log out and never show up again. And the further the progression gets, the more extreme that effect. Until eventually, nobody's left. Nobody's playing anymore. And oh, calm down, builders. Don't worry. I'll, I'll get to you in a moment. You play a hugely important role in this whole picture, and I'm aware I've just been making it seem like everybody just plays Valheim and fights and goes through, when really there's actually something that keeps them playing that I've been overlooking, and that is building. So just just calm, calm yourself and, and hold your horses just a little bit longer. I'll get to why builders are so critical for a server. But before that, we have to understand that most people just aren't like that. Most new Valheim players are not going to build big, fancy, extravagant things. But what you'll find is that in a base server, you have that progression of combat, right? But then, yeah, that's not enough. It doesn't keep people on. So that's where the building comes in. And people who take time to build, you know the people who everyone's like, let's go kill Bone Mass, yeah, Bone Mass, let's go kill him, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you have that one friend who's like, well, I, I just want to build this hut here in the woods, and it's really cool. I want to make it cooler. You know, like that person, that's the person who keeps playing Valheim for the long term. The person who takes the time. So you'll, you'll find that there's this tension of sorts in between players who are much more combat focused and they're playing Valheim like an action RPG versus the other players who do that or don't do that at all in some cases, but what they enjoy is building. So your job as a server manager is to make an experience that tricks the combat people into building and enjoying it and interacting with the builders. Without the building aspect, Valheim becomes boring and people will leave. That is the reality of it. You must figure out how can you get people playing together, working on projects, how can you make a system where they clear out an area and then guard the builders that then come in and build something to make it safe? That's the kind of interaction that you need to foster between these two player groups. And I'm not gonna pretend to know how to master all of this. I'm still learning a lot about this myself. But here is how I'm trying to manage this reality of getting players to interact and getting the fighters to coordinate with the builders and make beautiful stuff happen. What I've set up is these missions. And basically there's this tab in Discord called missions that people can look at. And I have included a couple of custom missions, right? Like the first one, the migration. That's a mission everybody does to even get here. But then the others are sort of things to get people to build stuff, right? So here, for example, is a mountain nearby our meadow. But before, you had to sail there. So here's the mission, right? It's called the Bridge to the Merchant mission. And now, here you can see that one of the players actually built the beginning of a bridge. They made the bridge all the way through, but they just left a framework. So now, someone can come in and make this bridge complete but somebody has already made it basic and functioning. And these missions help trigger players into coordinating with each other by giving them something outside of boss progression to work on. 
Here's another example of one of these custom missions. This one started out as a plains island close to the base, full of goblins. So we needed some combat-oriented players to clear out the goblins and pacify the island to then make it safe for the building-oriented players to come in and start getting to work. So let's see what they've done so far. Here is the same island. So we can see that we have a bridge leading up to the island. It's been made relatively safe from spawns. And people have been building out the spires, walling it up. And now all we need to do is set up the barley farm and make the kitchen. Unless that's the kitchen. And this mission system is by no means perfect. There's a lot that I can improve upon here. This is just one way you can give people another reason to play on your server. I'll give you another example of what I'm doing for my server. You need something aside from the classic boss progression, otherwise you're going to encounter the reality that people just stop playing after they kill the last boss. And as for the builders, well, the builders need to be able to log into the server and then see somebody is online. This is why having at least two players is really important. When people play and they're the only one on the server, it starts to build this feeling of the server is dead. And this is a reality of what happens. If you think about it, you progress through and then you're all strong. How do you model that with having the new players as well? Because they're on a separate progression. People are going to sort of mess the world up for the new players, right? Think about it. They're going to progress through the entire world. So what, then you can just invite new players on? And what about when they want to go into a dungeon and it's looted and nothing's there? Or they want to mine copper or tin, but they can't find any on the starting continent. And that's where this mod, Upgrade World, comes in. This mod is absolutely critical for a long-term Valheim world. If you want to learn more about exactly how to use it, then check out the guide I published called Reset Or and Dungeons in Valheim using Upgrade World Mod. I published it three weeks ago. But this reality of resetting and respawning the dungeons and also the metal nodes is super important. Because if you don't do this, then your Valheim server is a temporary experience. New players cannot join it because they will be thrust out of their immersion when they find that everything's gone over and over again. They find a new mountain, but no silver's there. They go to look for copper, but there's just empty pits. There has to be this regular maintenance where you reset things and you enable the resources to respawn for players that come as the old players have left. And that's why you need some overarching plot that binds people together and gives them something to participate in that is communal. I'll show you how I'm handling this now. This server is called the Path to Ashlands. It's a no map, no portals playthrough on the hardest difficulty setting. However, the death penalty is set to the easiest. So when you die, you keep all of your equipped gear which I find makes it much more fun. And the idea is that this path goes all the way to a port to sail to the Ashlands. You see, this seed was handpicked specifically for this reason. It's possible on this seed to make a path that goes all the way from the very southern end of the continent to the north. Now, they're going to patch the Ashlands to make it islands, so in reality this path will go all the way down to some huge expansive base dock, and then we'll go launch voyages into the Ashlands from there, but that dock has a path that goes all the way over here and all the way back to that continent. And what I've found is that people basically build areas out, and by changing where the players are focused, by giving them a new area to go into, they will keep expanding further and building out more and more and more. And so far, let's follow this path for a little bit. 
this is the, the, the full-on part of the path here. And you can see that it goes into more dangerous biomes. This goes all the way down. And what this has allowed is for players to sort of pick these areas, right? And then they build the areas out. They'll get inspired by that one build project, but then inevitably the area gets a bit laggy from all of the instances. And this actually sort of pushes players to go find somewhere new to move into. And I showed you earlier a communal dock house, right? That was the first communal dock house. This is the second one, further on in progression. So you can just keep going down this path and play the game that way, because trust me, even though we try to make the path relatively safe, it is by no means easy to travel on a path all the way down through all of these continents, especially when they go near the Mistlands and into dangerous areas in the plains. And this may seem silly. Why, why would you work on something that takes so long? But that's the thing. It gives people something outside of boss progression. So to keep your server active, you have to take that and combine it with some trickle of new players. In my case, for example, I do that by mentioning the server to you listening right now. This basically makes a slow trickle of players, and then should there get to a point where barely anybody's playing on the server at all, then I'll make a focus video and then invite a whole new wave of players. But. What about those of you who don't run YouTube channels? Because most of you don't, so what can you do? Well, that's where, honestly, the most realistic option for you is to leverage Discord. Without a YouTube channel or some kind of audience that you can pull from to get new people onto the server, what you do is go onto the official Valheim Discord which was recently hacked and then relaunched. So this is the actual official one, the, the new one, right? And from this point on, you at least have access. So now it's about figuring out how can you talk about your server so people know they can join, but in a way that sounds like you have something interesting to offer them. And that's why I've spent so much time talking to you about the normal Valheim player experience. Because if you think people will want to join your server just because you have it, it's not going to happen. People won't care. You have to do something interesting. Have some kind of alternative style of playing that makes it inviting to try for them. And I find that one of the easier ways to do this is to do a no map, no portal server because the vast majority of players have never handled that and they've never done it and they think that that would be absolutely miserable. But when you play on a server like this that's quite developed with lots of docks, even when you get lost, you end up stumbling onto someone else's base or some forgotten outpost. So inevitably, there's always something new to find. And now you're armed with all the knowledge that you need to attempt to keep a Valheim server active. By knowing how people play, and understanding a bit about how there tend to be fighters and builders, and obviously some players who ascend and do both, and then combine this with the reality that some players will play non-stop for three weeks, while other players might only play for two hours a week. Everybody has different time commitments, and in general, the biggest source of conflict comes from this very reality. Imagine that you log into Valheim, and it's the one time you get to play for the week, and you have an amazing experience, and then you log off, and you spend the whole week looking forward to your next chance to play. But then, you log in, and the very base that you helped build is full of further progression. Everybody's in iron now, and you're still just in bronze, and it feels like they've all progressed and left you behind. This is an incredibly common experience for Valheim players who participate on a server. There's a lot of conflict that comes up, and I'm not saying people fight. They do sometimes, but what I'm saying is there, there's this friction 
that develops between players who can afford to play for six hours a day and those people who can only play for an hour or two. So keep all of this in mind because some players just can't play as much as they want. And honestly, other players should probably play less often. And now you are equipped to manage your own dedicated server. And if you want to rent one, then consider using my link, jpvalheim at zap hosting. They're the service that I've been using this whole time, and I've had a good time with them. They fix problems when I need them fixed. They pay me well for the affiliate setup, and I have been able to resolve everything and run this whole server on it. So I'm happy. And I hope that you are happy with the videos. If there's anything you would like to learn more about, then comment below and let me know. And if you want YouTube to show you more Valheim videos, then like this video or any other video about Valheim. And you notice that as you do that three or four times, then more content like this is going to get recommended to you. That's how you show YouTube what to give you. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!